Have eh, you ever have you ever no. fished? John, it's an activity. Hold on, have you ever fished? No. So how can you in any way claim knowledge of this topic? Because I shoot hoops, and tomorrow I'm going to prove that with excellence. Seltzer, you get ready for tomorrow. I want everyone listening right now out to Villanova tomorrow, because I, I am going to put on a sh- oh, Ste- yeah? Steph Curry lookout. Oh, really? Oh, Good. <laughs> Good, I like this. I don't know. I'll give it a shot. We'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> I right, will have some fun. Come on out tomorrow to Villanova if you, if you can. Full court frenzy at the Pavilion during our program tomorrow. All right, let's get to it here. Look, a, lo- a lot to do. And we'll get into the Phillies as they get close to opening day. John, let's kick it off with the uh, the Eagles. You know, we heard yesterday, obviously, from Howie uh, and Sirianni and uh, Lurie later on today. We'll talk to Elliot during the 7 o'clock hour, who's, who's obviously there at the owners' meetings. And we'll be talking to these guys, you know, when they speak. You know, John, he- here's what's happened over the last, I-, I guess it's now two months. We have heard from the Eagles brass a few times. Now, not Lurie yet. That'll be later today for the first time. But we've heard from Howie and Nick a, a couple different times. The Eagles got rid of a bunch of players. They signed a bunch of players. They got rid of some coordinators. They brought in new coordinators. What you have now is, is for the most part, pretty much what you're going to have when the season comes. Of course, there's still a draft. There's only so much you can expect rookies to contribute year one. Hopefully, they do a great job. Maybe they will. Maybe they won't. We don't even know who they'll be yet. We don't even know what positions they'll be yet. What you have is, for the most part, what you're going to go to September with. And I'll ask this big open-ended question, John, to you and everyone today, 215-592-9494. Have the Eagles done enough to convince you? And when I say convince you, I mean have they convinced you that they are back in that elite Super Bowl contending zone? That's where they were in 2022. It sure as heck where it looked like they were for three months in 2023. And then, like, the roof collapsed. And so did our morale. As a fan base, rightfully so. Again, I ask this question. With a lot of moves now down and done and in the books, have they done enough to convince you that they're back? 215-592-9494. John, first crack at it. Yes. What do you see? What do you think? Absolutely. They have done. They did enough in one move with Saquon Barkley to give me a huge shot in the arm, no question about it. But Devin White, Bryce Huff, C.J. Gardner-Johnson, guys like that, I revere that toughness, that athleticism, that mindset of, of that type of player. Think about what we've done and compare it to what, holy cow, what the Dallas Cowboys have done during the free agency period. We are active. We're going out there. We're changing the landscape of the NFL and uh, there, there are teams who are sitting on their hands. I cannot get over that part. Uh, I Saquon really was all I needed. I love Saquon as a person. I think when he was at Penn State, we all appreciated him. You know, from sort of afar, uh, he was he was there. We all saw the quality individual that he was, and now he gets to be ours. He's ultra motivated. He was just done wrong by that New York team in the way that they treated him contractually speaking. He's going to come in here and he gets to play them twice a year, uh, which is amazing for us. He's a quality human who's been underappreciated by those giants and he's going to make them pay. I love that. I love being on the right side of that story. Uh, He's a face melter. He is an every down back. He is something we have not had. Last year, Swift was, you know, a, a 20 carries was it the most we could ever expect. Uh, that th- This is just where Saquon gets started feeling like Saquon at 20 carries. I love where this is going. Uh, and, and now with Kellen Moore, you know, the changes in our offense that will already be changed because we've got a more established offensive coordinator in Kellen Moore who will run the ball, who has had success running the football. I hear all the time people who want to be a naysayer. They say, well, Kellen, look at what he did out in Los Angeles. Didn't run the football. That was a mess. I'm not counting last year uh, in, in terms of his want to yeah. Translating Eckler into was pretty, Eckler, what Eckler he Eckler was pretty did. banged up also. He was banged he up. He got banged up early. Never really seen the same. It, yes. Again, yeah. it, it felt it felt like a mulligan of a season for the offensive coordinator. I, I'm fine with the fact that, that we've got a guy who has had success running the football. We're going to dominate running the football. We've seen the Chiefs, an offense, be so dominant, lift the entire team. 
including the defense. We can do that. Our run game can control clocks, control games to the point where it'll give our defense a little bit of time to uh, figure things out uh, on, on the back end of things. The run game will dominate and lift this team. Saquon every week with 20 carries and then five catches on top of it, that controls the pace. It grinds every defense we play into little pulps out there. And the way that'll open things up downfield for A.J. and Devontae and Dallas, the way Jalen can hold defenders for Saquon on the backside and vice versa. Our offensive skill guys, they, they're they going to chew this league up. And again, it will allow Vic Fangio the time to find the schemes that best best fit this person you know what cracks me up, that he's Tom? got to work with. You're saying a lot of nice things. And I mean, look, a lot of it makes a lot of sense. But I think there's a lot you're not addressing. So let me just say this. And again, everyone can weigh in 215-592-9494. It's a simple question, but you know, we'll see where your answers go. Have the Eagles done enough to convince you that they're back to being elite, that they're back to being a Super Bowl contender? The answer from my standpoint is no. And let me tell you why they haven't convinced me. And, and John, you talked a lot about it's good unbelievable, stuff. man. Hold on. Like, what are you expecting? Right, here's the deal: they Holy haven't cow. told us what the issue was. What was the freaking issue that tore a ten and one team apart? And because I haven't been told what that is, I don't know that it's soft. So hell no, I'm not convinced. You think they I have still to tell don't... you to solve no, the issue? No, but I know this: something happened. Yes. I don't know what it was. I still don't know what it was. We may not ever find out what it was. I don't think that providing that inf- info to us is going to help them well, get they, to the other end of that. You know, no, to be fair to them, they don't have to provide it to us. But, I mean, if the question is, am I convinced, my answer is no, because I don't even still know what the hell happened and whether they have fixed it. Like, to me, there's a couple ways I look at it. Look, I agree with John that defensive improvement looks good. I mean, obviously, they got to deal with the cornerback situation. That does worry me, and I'll use the word worry, not concern. It worries me, okay? Because now the draft will probably play a big part in that, and and hopefully they get a kid in the first or second round. They can come in and start. I, I really hope big time they do that because I think they need it. Uh, Gardner Johnson's a big upgrade. Uh, Huff will see. I, we don't know if Reddick's going to be on the team or not. I mean, Devin White should help, but he also got benched at the end of the year. We'll see. I mean, the defense has got to be better because it can't be worse. It's got to be a lot better. It doesn't have to be great, but you want to see the defense get to a point where you can at least feel like it's an average defense in the NFL, and, and maybe, they'll, maybe they'll get there. Maybe they'll exceed that. We'll, we'll see. Offensively, obviously, Saquon helps. There's no doubt about it. You know, removing Quez helps. Watkins helps. No, He's going to be the focal well, point of our I offense. Don't, so here's the other thing. To it's me, a huge deal. To me, there's three main reasons why I say no, am I convinced. doesn't mean they can't do it. Doesn't I mean, they, they could do it, but why I'm not convinced, three things. One, I still don't know what the issue was, so I don't know if they've solved it. Two, Hurts. We'll see. We'll see. I was, I was a big believer, and, and then I'm not, and, and now I want to be, but we'll see. We'll see under Kellen Moore what he can do. I mean, it's great to have Saquon, who obviously can catch, you know, 85 passes a year. We'll, we'll see if Hurts can find him. We'll see. Uh, I'm not convinced. Sirianni, reason three. I mean, guys, let's remember as a fan base, most of us, as defined by a poll we did at the end of the season, 71% thought Sirianni should have been canned. 71% of people that responded to our poll mid-January thought Sirianni should be canned. Lurie, who will speak later today, chose not to. That's his choice. It's his team. Obviously, there's something to be said for keeping Sirianni. Guy made the playoffs for years in a row out of the gate. That's very impressive. We also know things utterly collapsed in December into mid-January on his watch. It's one of the most bizarre things I've ever seen in Philadelphia sports. And we now know he's not going to be running the offense because Kellen Moore is, but he's going to have his hand in the cookie jar, but he's not, but he is. And then Seltzer tells me, but he's going to be CEO of the team, and that's okay because that model can work, and sometimes it does. And then he gets asked a question at a press conference, what are you going to do? And he says, well, sit in on some defensive meetings. Like That part feels weird to me. So, John, your enthusiasm and your optimism – I love hearing it because I want to hear that. I want to feel that. And and like you, I see signs of growth with the moves they've made. That's good stuff. I mean, clearly they've added more good players and lost good players. They didn't have that many good players to lose. But I will say this. Kelsey and Cox, that's a problem. I mean, let's not act like it's just the same team minus some bad players and then you add the good players 
and then Cox and Kelsey are here. They ain't here. As Rick Pitino said years ago about Larry Bird, Robert Parrish, and Kevin McHale, they ain't walking through that door. Kelsey and Cox are gone. Those are big losses. I mean, Kelsey especially was still playing at an enormously elite level. So as we sit here today and again, you know, later on, Lori, later on, Sirianni, we'll be all ears to, to hear what is said, the whole deal, and digest it and make of it what, what we all do. But you can weigh in on this, you know, late March day at 215-592-9494, knowing that the bulk of the Eagles team for 2024 has been assembled. Some moves still to make, be made, you know, probably some low-level free agent signings if I had to guess. But mostly what you got is what you got. Plus the, the draft coming up. Have they convinced you? They have not convinced me. Now, that's okay. I want to be clear. They don't have to convince There's me. There's so they much don't... more to this offseason than, than what's taking place. This is just such a small little sliver. Well, is Reddick going to be on the team? Of what's going to happen. I don't know. I don't you know, know either. You know, it's possible that he's <laughs> on the team. It, it's crazy. It is it's crazy, it but it's possible. possible. It is possible. And if he's on the team, I think it might make us a better team. If he's able to handle the the, the emotions that go along with whatever this is, the travails yeah. of the process of determining whether he's going to be on the team or not. Look, I sure hope he's on the team. We'll, we'll see where you stand. $14.25 million. Yeah. They could be paying Hassan Reddick that much this year. It's, it's very They're possible. They're holding to that. Yeah, it's certainly possible he's on the team. All right, look, we'll talk to Elliot in the 7 o'clock hour from the NFL owners meetings. Your phone calls throughout the show, 215-592-9494. Have the Eagles convince you. You tell us. By the way, Phillies tickets, how you can win them for the opening, uh, not opening day, for the game next week. We'll tell you that coming up next, how you can win those tickets today on our show, and we'll rock all the calls. Joe DeCamera, John Ritchie, it is, of course, 94 WIP.